Huh? Dope. He's enjoying the money. Yeah, I told him not to do it. But, you know. yeah, I could do it like, for one month. <laughs> I know. At it's most, a, maybe three years, right? Yeah. After that. But the pressure is on all the time you know, to make money, make profit. Constantly. Yeah, you have someone on top of you. Yeah. Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, this morning we will have uh, Professor Fuan Nong from here, Princeton University, and he will tell us about some experiment on a magnetic system. Let's welcome Professor Fuan. Uh, good morning. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. So I'm going to give two talks uh, and make it rather informal. Uh, since I really don't have enough material to fill an hour, an hour and a half. So I'm going to go slow and, and uh, feel free to interrupt questions. So the, the first topic is uh, about uh, uh, using transport to probe quantum systems, uh, especially uh, potential candidates for spin liquids. And uh, uh, this talk is more about the, the experiment itself, rather than a broad overview of uh, pyrochlor spin liquid, which I presume other students talked about, right? Or soon will. Uh, and the second talk, just to look ahead, uh, is uh, on a different method to probe uh, what's called the all-in, all-out. So the py pyrochloros as a family is very rich because you can basically replace all the uh, three. All, all two elements, uh, and um, you can get a variety of uh, magnetic phenomena and, and ground states that are currently very popular in intensely studied. So the all in all out is, is yet again another one of these uh, strange states, and, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in the second lecture. So in this first lecture, uh, let's see this works. Uh, uh, I'll introduce, uh, remind you what, what the Berry curvature is and how it can give rise to the Hall effect in a neutral current. You know, we're not talking about electrons here. The two materials that I will discuss are completely uh, complete insulators. In fact, one of them is transparent, so that tells you there are no electrons in there. And uh, nonetheless, they show a Hall effect when you induce a uh, neutral current. And, and, and the goal is to detect that, which is sort of a, uh, perhaps an oxymoronic notion, right? Because the Hall effect implies the Lorentz force, so you, you need a charge. But because of the magic of the Berry curvature, many, many notions are being revised in condensed matter. Okay, so then I'll, I'll go uh, on to talk about the pyrochlor. Uh, so at the, right at the outset, if you aren't aware of this, uh, pyrochlorus always have these indices, 227. So that, that's a good mnemonic to recognize a pyrochlor when you see the compound written out like this. Uh, this one is not a pyrochlor, but it, it's one of the very few materials known that have a Kagome uh, lattice. Uh, and I'll discuss this at length. Uh, and moreover, it, it undergoes a phase transition. Uh, actually, this should be an anti ferrous magnet, sorry. This yeah. Okay, and, and the work here is uh, the work of my, the research here is the work of uh, my student, Max Hirschberger, uh, working together with Jason Kreisen, who is a student of uh, Bob Carver. Um, and we acknowledge uh, support from a number of agencies. So our interest in this problem was revived uh, by this paper by uh, Nagaosa and Patrick Lee. Uh, who pointed out that if you, if you have, imagine that you have uh, local moments on a lattice, an insulator. And, and uh, looking a little bit ahead, uh, if, you, if the spins form a, uh, uh, a conical pattern, then an electron, if you could induce an electron or uh, even a magnon going around the uh, the three sites will pick up a phase 
which is called the Berry phase. Right? So the Berry phase can come from an orbital orbit in K space. It can also come from the, uh, the, the angular variation of the spin. So imagine a wave packet, we're talking about insulators, a wave packet containing spin excitations hopping around. Then they would experience the Berry curvature, the Berry phase. However, uh, these authors pointed out that if you have a triangular lattice, uh, it, it's, it doesn't work because adjacent plaquettes will cancel. And you can easily convince yourself of that. Uh, it doesn't work for a square lattice as well. Uh, what you really need is a Kagome. And at the time, we knew about this particular Kagome material, so we thought, uh, so that got us very interested. And it's easy to see how that comes about. If you have uh, three spins that are at an angle, that, that they define a solid angle, they won't cancel between this triangle and the hexagon, which is the next uh, plaquette. So, so there will be a finite chirality. Right? And uh, then you can show uh, that the spin waves, the magnons, form bands, and each one of them has a specific uh, churn number. Uh, that, that won't concern us uh, uh, in, in this talk. All right, so, so here, here's how you express it. So the uh, spins in forming, I don't know why this keeps skipping. Uh, if they form a uh, solid angle, then this triple product will be non-zero. And, and so this will give a, a contribution to the Hamiltonian. And uh, uh, this, this contribution will then uh, lead to, so how would you detect it? Well, you measure the thermal Hall effect, right? You pass a heat current in one direction, let's say along X. Magnetic field is along Z. And you, you could, well, that's a prediction, you could detect a, a Y component to the heat current. So, uh, however, um, and then they extend this argument to a true spin liquid, which had nothing to do with this. And then they couldn't carry out the calculation because uh, no one knows what the ground state means to say that you have a spin liquid. I mean, there are candidates, but no one knows for sure. And they didn't even bother with this. They just said, well, if it's a spin liquid, it should have a fermion surface of spin-offs, which are fermions. And, and, and then they applied uh, ordinary transport theory and, and, and claimed to predict kappa xy. Uh, a, a year later, uh, the, the experiment was carried out by a group in, uh, under, uh, led by Pokura. Uh, but then it was pointed out by Murakami, a former postdoc of Nagaosa, that they had made a mistake, that the calculation was missing the important magnetization current. And th this is a, uh, this is a, uh, a difficult notion, uh, and even you know, masters of transport like Nagaosa and Patrick uh, 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 forgot about that. So I'll discuss the history of that because I think it's instructive how ideas begin, you know, 30, 40 years ago with Luttinger, and then they, they lie dormant until the experiments or the theoretical community uh, catches up with, uh, with uh, the, these ideas, and, and uh, then they, you know, they, they lead to fundamental changes in how we view certain quantities. I'll discuss the history of that. All right, so soon after this, uh, Nagaosa uh, persuaded the Kuras group uh, led by Onose, uh, although he was actually a postdoc with me, but he went back to work with Tokura, and they uh, they found supposedly a thermal Hall effect in this pyrochlor, which again is these two two seven, and uh, this pyrochlor goes through a magnetic transition, but the signal is very weak. Yeah. Sorry, question. Yeah. Where does that the what? That this one here? Yes. Uh, okay, so if, if the three spins on this plaquette, for, forget the lower one, right? If this triangle, if they are all parallel to each other, then the triple product vanishes. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. However, if they make a crown, right, then uh, a, a wave packet that hops around clockwise or counterclockwise will pick up a phase shift, a berry phase, of the uh, appropriate sign. Right? So it, it's easier to think of electrons. Uh, so an electron that hops onto this local moment by the um, Hohn's rule will get locked to this local moment. 
So when it hops to this one, it'll, it'll then switch its spin to be power. And then when it comes to here, it'll again be uh, aligned with this, right? So in going around this uh, closed loop, its spin will carve out a solid angle. Okay. So it's, it's like an effective John Simon's kind of uh, I don't know if this is like churn silence. Uh, that, 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 I, I'm not sure because it doesn't have this A, D, A kind of Lagrangian. But, uh, my question is can you, can you derive this starting from something from like a Lagrangian? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it, but yeah. No, 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 this, this is, these are spins that are, you know, Heisenberg. Okay. Yeah. So it can be done from Heisenberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a T over U. T over U? It's a Hubbard. Yeah, yeah, Hubbard. You don't start from high you start from some Hubbard. That's right. So all theory questions should be directed. Yeah. If I could open the question, but this is here, what are the defining features, especially for you experiment? Yeah. How can you know that it's basically a So maybe we should postpone it when it comes to the experiment. So roughly at this stage, it's uh, you know you have a very large uh, exchange energy, and that you infer by measuring the susceptibility. So it'll be Curie-wise like, right? And so the so you know how it is, right? You plot inverse chi versus T, and the negative intercept, right, on the temperature axis, gives you the uh, Curie-wise temperature. So there, there are systems in which that temperature is like 100 Kelvin, or even as low as uh, 20 Kelvin. And yet, if you cool it down to 20 Kelvin temperatures, the system fails to order. So mean field would predict that it should order as an antiferral magnet, but it fails to do so. And then when you look at the lattice structure, you find that it's highly frustrating because it's, it's part of a triangle, right? So if you have up, down, that the third corner doesn't know whether it should be up or down because the two neighbors are asking it to do different things, right? So this is called geometric frustration. So is any frustrated it's what? state, is any frustrated state then should be called as geometric? With a large exchange energy. Well, that doesn't define it, but that is like the precondition. So you keep cooling it down and it just fails to order. Now, that doesn't prove it's a spin liquid. In fact, this is the forefront of research. You know, what, what are the defining experiments of a spin liquid? And uh, neutron scattering claims to be the, uh, the best way to see it. Actually, there is a nice review that appeared just this week in Physics Today with a very bold claim that, you know, the Edison site, we may be seeing the spin liquid now. It's by Imai and Yang Yi. So just look look at physics today this week. Did, did I answer your question? Yes. Other questions? All right. So uh, uh, okay. So the, the initial measurements are uh, sort of a hint. There's a hint that there might be there might be a, 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 a kappa x y signal. But you know, I, I would never publish data that looks like that because it's more like <laughs> economics than uh, physics. But uh, uh, anyway, that, that's where it stood. Uh, so the and, and the, the the amount of measurements is very few, limited because uh, well, you know, the signal was very noisy. But as I mentioned, uh, Murakami soon after said that the calculation was wrong. Uh, that this prediction was based on a uh, total neglect of what's called magnetization current. And, and I think the current consensus among the theorists who, who work in this area are, uh, is that, that Murakami is right, that, that uh, this calculation is completely neglecting that. All right, so what, what is this, this thing about magnetization current? So a long time ago, um, uh, uh, Lattinger uh, wrote this purely formal paper that said that, well, because uh, at that time in the 60s, uh, everyone was doing the Kubo approach to, to calculate transport. So today we would call that linear response. Uh, but, you know, how to handle thermal conductivity is uh, 
conceptual problem, right? Because uh, delta t, the gradient that you apply, so normally when you do an experiment, you apply a field and you look for a response, whether it's susceptibility or current flow or whatever. Here you're applying uh, not a field, but a uh, gradient, which is really a statistical force. Right? There's no way you're going to put delta t into a formal Hamiltonian and then crank it like Kubo, you know, because you cannot handle that. It's a statistic, statistical weighting factor in, in the partition function. So there was a conceptual problem about how to do that. And Luttinger came up with the following idea, which he, he said uh, came from Ulam, one of the original people who worked on relativity. And Ulam blamed it on Einstein. So <laughs> maybe this shouldn't be called Luttinger's idea. But anyway, he brought it to a condensed map. So uh, the object is to measure a heat current in the presence of a gradient, right? So this is the way you, you want to think about it. Imagine you, you consider photons in a gravitational field, right? And so uh, uh, Einstein had told us that photons will, uh, they, they have a, basically a mass coming from the energy, and therefore in the potential gradient, they will accumulate, they will pick up kinetic energy, right? I've drawn this as a cartoon, as a Doppler shift into the blue. So energy is being being uh, uh, driven down, so this part gets warmer, and this part is cooler, right? So in equilibrium, there should be a temperature, a uh, heat current, a thermal current that uh, restores equilibrium. So a uh, uh, thermal current flows vertically upwards, right? That's the quantity you wish to calculate. But this is very hard, as we started out by saying. Uh, however, uh, you, can, you can instead calculate the uh, energy current that, that results from a gravitational potential. And those two currents are exactly equal because, because of uh, equilibrium, right? So forget about the temperature uh, effect, that this uh, gradient-driven current. Simply add a gravitational potential to your Hamiltonian, even though it's a spin system uh, in condensed matter, uh, and then now you have a real uh, physical field that you can play with, exactly like electric potential. So th this gravitational potential is called a pseudo-gravitational potential, psi, and uh, it comes in like this. So you have a Hamiltonian density, right, integrate all over all space, uh, and it's acted on by gravity, basically. That's your potential. And then you can forget about this. So you just crank the, the, the handle in the linear response, and you get the heat current. Uh, you get the, the current in, that responds to this gravitational field, right? And you identify that with the heat current. So it, it's, it's a, a clever way to get around this. Uh, at that time, um, uh, Luttinger used, uh, 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 well, set the field to zero. And, and there was really nothing new. You can, you can do this uh, uh, without, without any of this machinery, um, and you get an answer no different than what he got, right? So this idea sort of lay dormant for, for uh, 20 years. Right? This is 64. And then in the period of uh, quantum Hall effects, it, it had a, a rebirth when people started to apply temperature gradients to uh, quantum Hall devices, Gallimard's like silicon MOSFET. And they, they rapidly realized that Luttinger's uh, method was essential. I think this was first noted by Abrotsov. Uh, Spivak never gets tired of reminding me of this. Every time I mention this problem to him, he said, oh yeah, but the Soviets did it first. And, and in this case, he was right. Abrotsov uh, did, didn't worry about this. Uh, but Strata's scheme uh, uh, really revived this and found that it, it was an essential uh, uh, issue. That when you have a magnetic field present, it's essential to use the gravitational potential. But the net result, which I won't go through because you know, there are a lot of terms and it's a bit of a mess. Uh, then this was taken up by uh, Cooper and Halperin when they looked at the uh, thermoelectric response of a 2D gas. Uh, and then more recently, Organasian, who lectured this week here. And uh, then the, the, the work of Murakami is directly relevant to what I'm talking about today. How do you know what potential to add based on your thermal gradient? 
Is it just, just like that. Standard one or... there, there, there's no thermal gradient in this problem. Yeah. 